Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Tracy, how many times have you heard a woman say, oh, my hair, I can't do anything with it? <laughs> or how many times have you seen a guy looking in the mirror going, what's happening to my hairline? Exactly, it's gone. But did you <laughs> actually realize that there are some diseases that you can get of the hair? I did not, but thank goodness we have Dr. Don Davis, our very favorite dermatologist from Mayo Clinic, with us to discuss hair issues. Thanks for having real, me. Is there a real show topic on just hair? There is. In fact, I think we could talk about hair for multiple shows and mm -hmm. still not be finished. Well, I suppose if you throw the scalp in there with it, too. Right. And so the issue with the hair is that it comes from the scalp. And so there are two different things that can go wrong to give you a hair disorder. One, you can have an issue with the actual hair shaft, which is what we call hair, the f dead protein that comes in a long chain that comes out of our scalp. Or you can have issues with the scalp itself that then causes the hair to not grow. And so I think the lay public is very aware that as you age you can have thinning of the hair what people would call male pattern baldness mm -hmm. and I think that people are becoming more aware that women can have male pattern baldness we just call it androgenetic alopecia and it can either have a male pattern or it can have a female pattern because men and women lose their hair differently from um, male pattern baldness if you will the other thing is, is that I think people know that after a stressful event, because hair is mostly cosmetic and is there to uh, protect our scalps a, little, scalps a little bit and also retain a little bit of heat. But from a body standpoint, other than that, it's purely cosmetic. That if you have a stressful event like delivering a baby or having a surgery or getting a divorce, that you can shed your hair out of stress and it will grow back. We call that telogen effluvium. Can you say that again? Telogen effluvium. So telogen is the shedding hair phase. We all grow and shed our hair in cycles. Otherwise, we'd be like a snake or a reptile, and we'd grow and shed a skin all at once. Um, and effluvium means robustly. So essentially, if all your hair cycles from a traditional growth, rest, and shed phase that kind of happens at regular or irregular intervals so we don't grow and shed all at once, and it cycles into more shedding due to a stressful event, everything kind of gets upset. The apple cart gets turned over. People shed way more of their hair than they usually should, and it takes about 9 to 12 months for the hair to regain its normal um, grow and shed cycle. We, we had uh, said we could do a show about hair, and you said there's actually diseases of the hair, yes. which I've never heard of that before. So people think about growing and shedding hair and stress, and they think about female and male pattern baldness, but... I'm glad that we're talking about this because people can actually have disorders of the hair shaft itself. The hair shaft is a growth of dead protein chains that come out of your scalp and make the actual hair. And those can be abnormally formed, either genetically inherited or spontaneous, such that people say, my hair glistens strangely, or my hair feels like wire or straw, or I can only grow my hair out a half an inch before it breaks or I've never needed a haircut. Um, my hair is normal, quote unquote, and density and texture, but I've never had my haircut and I'm 30 years old, why is that? And hmm. so if that happens to you where you feel your, your hair has an abnormal luster or lack of luster, it feels different than most people's hair, or you simply can't keep it to grow um, appropriately, come to the dermatologist because we can do a hair shaft analysis and look under the microscope at varying strengths of magnification to figure out what hair disorder you have. And some of them can be inherited and passed along to your family. Is it a hair disorder or uh, is it the hair follicle that actually produces the hair that's the problem? That's a great question. So it's a genetic abnormality or structure abnormality from the bulb. Hair is like tu a tulip. So I always tell my patients, when you grow hair, it's like growing a tulip. You have a bulb that sits in the ground, which is your scalp, and it has to be oriented in the right direction and it has to have growth factors around it to then grow a shaft that if it were a flower would be a tulip but instead is the hair shaft so it gets composed in the bulb which is where things go abnormal you can also have abnormalities of the protein structure that supports the hair that keeps it anchored in your scalp and if you have problems with that you'll grow normal hair but you won't keep it simply because it gets pulled out with regular things such as wearing a hat or brushing your hair and that protein structure or the change that you were saying if people have a disease of the hair is that something that they develop over time? Or if it's a family one, of course, you're, it's inherited. Yeah, so you're, you're born with a tendency for the most part if it's inherited. Some of them can accelerate with time and get worse. However, for ones that have anchor 
problems where it's the supportive tissue that just doesn't keep the hair that's healthy into the scalp, those actually improve with age, probably because we get crustier and our skin gets stiffer. And so you just simply have more peripheral support so it doesn't get yanked hmm. out. And we're able to teach you some basic common sense things to allow you to keep your hair, you know, no tight braids, no dreadlocks, be careful with hats, things like that. Then there's the other set of hair conditions that are much more common, which is where you get an inflammatory disease that comes to your scalp and eats away the little tulip bulbs that are sitting in your skin. And if an inflammatory disease eats away those bulbs and its surrounding structures, you will no longer be able to grow any hair in the future if, if it results in a scar. So if something is inflamed, we try to turn that process off immediately so that you've retained your hair follicular unit. So eventually your body will hopefully remember how to grow a bulb which then will become hair. Is that the alopecia when people lose their all of their hair? Yes, so the term alopecia means hair loss. And there are multiple reasons to lose hair. And so if you have a section of your scalp that is literally bald, as if somebody you know shaved it down mm -hmm. to the scalp, or it's nicely cut out like a circle, and it, it's in a weird pattern, or the skin turns really shiny, and looks very thin or it bleeds very easily. Or you notice that when you brush one part of your hair, many, many more hairs come out of that side than when you brush on other areas. Come to the dermatologist because these are all very time sensitive diseases and time is of the essence when it comes to the hair clock, mm -hmm. when it starts to tick. Because once you destroy the hair follicular unit and it scars shut, we cannot grow that hair back. Wow, so get to the dermatologist early. Now, what about, let's talk talk about, get an update on the new treatments that you have for male baldness, female baldness. Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing I like to tell people is they're not alone. It's something that people feel very embarrassed about oftentimes, and men and women will go through all sorts of great lengths to try to hide their thinning hair. Time is also of the essence because the more we can block those hormone receptors on the scalp, the more your hair will be able to grow with regards to um, male or female pattern baldness. The best things to do are to use over-the-counter uh, Rogaine, which is available in 2% strength or 5%. There's no reason to use 2% when you can use 5%. Traditionally, it's labeled as being marketed for men, but it's just as good for women. You can use it in a shampoo, a foam, or a solution. I personally recommend the solution. It's sometimes a little harder to find in the stores, but you can order it online if the store doesn't have it. That's simply because when you use a shampoo, you wash it in and it washes out. And when you use a foam, it oftentimes gets, gets absorbed in the hair you have. And so then it, it doesn't get to the scalp, which is where the action is, versus it's much easier to use a solution and simply make sure that the liquid gets on your scalp as if you're giving yourself um, a, a medical treatment. I just, for the sake of time, I have one more question to ask. How is it that someone with straight hair can all of a sudden get curly hair? Is it middle age or is it having a baby that makes that happen? <laughs> yeah, so straight hair. I'm asking for a friend. Or it's yes. chemotherapy. Or, ke yeah. no, or chemotherapy. It, that changed it too. It actually yeah. changed the color a little bit. Yeah, so the color of the hair is based on the pigment that's inside of the bulb. So if you were to cut the bulb open, it would be colored to a certain extent on the inside, and that determines the color of your hair. We go gray when that pigment goes away because the light reflects a white or gray pigment. Um, the shape of the hair is based on um, how round or oblong it is when it's impregnated through the bulb into your scalp. So um, stick straight hair is a perfect circle versus curly hair tends to be more oblong and there's more sulfur to sulfur bonding in curly hair. So um, if you have a medication or an event in your life that causes your growth factors and structure of your hair to change, you can go from thinner or thicker hair or straight or curly hair. So you get gray hair because the follicle that produces the hair runs out of pigment. Correct. Uh, no way to get it back, I guess. <laughs> no, and if, if there was, we could all retire. Yeah. <laughs> and I would take you with me. Yeah, Yay. would you? Oh, that'd, be, that'd be great. You're so nice. All right, everything you wanted to know about hair and more with Dr. Don Davis, dermatologist at the Mayo Clinic. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Davis. My pleasure.